I've got a little project to work on today. My brother-in-law gave me this bandsaw, and the bandsaw weighs about 900 pounds. It's on a pallet. We basically just backed a trailer up and slid it off into the garage. Uh, I need to get it onto a stand so that my wife can park her van back in the garage. And that's what I'm going to work on today. For my birthday back in April, my parents and my wife went together and bought me this nice mobile stand. It's uh, by Shopbox. It's got a 1,300 pound capacity and it should do a really nice job of making that saw mobile. The idea I have for mounting the saw is to leave it on the pallet and the main reason why I want to do that is you can see there's a bit of an offset on the back of the saw so I would have difficulty getting a nice rectangular fit and this uh, pad over here would be you know just floating in air. I don't know how well you can see it but there's a line there the max line and there's a max line there now there's about three inches I've extended about three inches too far to fit this pallet. But what I've got on the front, where it's bolted down to the pallet, I think I can take my reciprocating saw and take this first board off. And then the other thing I'll do is once I get this on the stand, uh, I'll be able to take some boards and put them underneath of this pallet, because that's all this is, is a pallet, and screw them in from the top with a lot of screws. 
uh, maybe two per board to kind of sturdy this up and make sure it stays nice and steady and doesn't have any issue holding the saw. Right now, I can shake the saw and there's no play in it. So the uh, pallet's actually sturdier than it looks. I've cut a couple of blocks of wood to three and an eighth inches, which is a quarter inch higher than the shop box will hold the saw. What I'm going to attempt to do is, is use my pry bar here and I'm going to get use it as a lever and try to raise the saw up high enough to slide these blocks under. Once I get blocks under all four corners, I'll then be able to slide the side rails of the shop box under and get it mounted. Using the same procedure I used on the back of the pallet, I repeated that on the front. And now I've got the pallet high enough where I can slide the shop box under it. What I need to do now is these, these pieces will be in the way and they'll be near impossible to get out once I get this mounted to the shop box. So I want to come in from the side and I want to put something under the side to brace it that will be underneath of this bar so I can pull it out drop this onto the shop box once I have it assembled around the pallet. I decided I'm going to try to use some shims. These are several shims that I'll jam up under here. And the reason why I want to use the shims is because once I get this mounted to the shop box, these will still be under here. I can roll the shop box around. These will separate from one another and I should be able to roll, roll them right out from underneath of it so that they won't be stuck under the pallet permanently. Now, what I'm starting to see is with the, with this jacked up, I'm starting to see some bow in the center because this board is no longer protecting the pallet from the weight of the saw. So what I'm going to do is drive five shims under here to give this a little bit of support. I'll do the same thing on the other side, uh, and then I'll remove these blocks, which I, I'm going to put one here to get that side raised up, but I'll remove these blocks once I get the shop box under it. I'll knock these out before I put the the bars on the front and the back to build the shop box uh, box around the saw. I have the saw resting on shims all the way around, all sides, uh, and I've, after driving the shims in, these are now loose, so I can remove these blocks of wood and begin the assembly of the shop box around the pallet. One of the first things I need to do before I start assembling the shop box is there's about a half of an inch, these, these supports under the pallet stick out about a half of an inch. Uh, I want to go ahead and cut those off flush. Uh, what that'll do is allow me to compress the shop box, and the more I compress it, compress it the uh, sh more stable it will be. So I'm going to start off by cutting these three uh, pallet ends off. You might remember we need to take the first lat off of this pallet uh, in order to reduce the size enough to get uh, within the the maximum expansion distance of the shop box. So let's grab the saw and we'll go ahead and take these three segments off. <laughs> I've 
got the pallet sized properly and the shop box is well within the it's well within the maximum expansion distance for the sides. Uh, what I want to do now is I'm really ready to bring up the other side of the shop box and put the end rails on and then lower it onto the uh, shop box. But what I want to do first is I'm going to make some boards and run them underneath of the pallet and screw them to the pallet to give it a little bit more support. While I had this pallet up in the air, I took the opportunity to shore up the pallet. Uh, I put these boards here on both sides, and right here you can see these screws. Those are three-inch screws. Um, I've got a board that runs lengthwise right along the side of the saw, and I've attached it along the top as well. Uh, and the idea is to kind of help uh, as much as I can to avoid sag uh, in the pallet. Uh, I'm ready now to go ahead and bring up the shop fox and start uh, putting it together around the pallet. Got one for the back side. I've got the stand fitting nice and tight all the way around the pallet. Uh, all it's left to do is uh, tighten up the bolts that lock the stand uh, to this particular size. So I'm going to go ahead now and do that. I apologize for the lighting. Uh, I've been working on this for a while and starting to lose daylight. All that's left is on these bolts that I put in. I ran a nut up on each of them and that nut now will get cranked down tightly against the rail to help keep that bolt from backing out. I won't make you watch that since it's getting dark. I'll go ahead and tighten those up and then uh, I'll come back and show you the final results. Well, I'm finally finished with the install and I'm very happy. Uh, this thing is still a beast. It takes a little bit to move it, but as you can see it is now mobile so let's get some 220 run and i'll be ready to start using this thing thanks a lot for watching guys i hope you enjoyed the video uh if you did uh, please consider subscribing to my channel uh please like this video and if you have any comments or any questions about the shop fox stand um i'd be glad to try to answer them Thank you and have a wonderful evening.